I was at this uh, press conference in New York, so let's get the details out of the way. There's a lot of confusion on what's going on. So I guess this is going to be a, a four part video because we got to talk about Big Baby Miller and what he's going to be doing. He's the guy who confronted Anthony Joshua in New York. His first time meeting Anthony Joshua being in the same room and with him. Um, that was on July the 17th. Right now is July the 19th, 2018. I'm Tishri Controversy. This is Tishri Controversy Live, and it is official that Anthony Joshua will be defending his IBF, WBO, WBA Super World, and what they want me to mention, the UK. He has four titles, mate, that lucrative and seductive, ever so alluring IBO title. That's, this, that's that green one you're seeing right there. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live with FightView360.com. And I cover every single major fight live. So, here in the United States, we're going to be able to watch the fight free. If, obviously, you sign up for um, The Zone, which is a new streaming platform. The first 30 days are free. Um, www.obviouslyda. I just don't like the name, you know. In fact, let me pull it up here for you. Let me pull it up here for you. I just don't, you know, but hey, maybe it'll catch on because, see, it's, it confuses me because I, I try to say the zone, which it's called, but it's spelled this, this, this way. Damn it. The silly way with this D-A-Z-N is, is, is weird. My bad. Wrong screen. You know? I can't really see it because for some reason my there it is right here. It is. You see this, you know, but anyway, the first 30 days are going to be free. After that, it's going to be nine ninety nine a month, 10 bucks a month. So if you sign up on like September the 22nd, the day of or the day before, then you're going to be able to watch Joshua versus Pavekin free here in the United States. That's a smart strategy, right? Then September the 29th, Bellator 206 with Rampage Jackson versus Vandalay Silver. I swear they fought probably like three, four times already. But and then that October 6th card, that Matchroom USA card is going to be in Chicago. Archerberta BF is supposed to be on that card. Um, Gerald Big Baby Miller is going to be fighting Archer Berta, No, Archer Spielko on that card. Demetrius Andre is going to be on that card. Katie Taylor is going to be on that card. And I'm probably missing, you know, some names. So just like Eddie Hearn does over there in the UK, even if you don't like the matchups, he still likes to stack his cards up with his big names. So the first two Matchroom, Matchroom USA cards are going to be October the 6th, and I forgot, he's working on one for November. You know, I'm thinking that's for uh, Maurice Hooker and um, and um, Alex Sosito in Cali, something like that. But, in regards to this fight, which we're talking about, I think fans are just, you know, um, okay, as I said, this is going to be a four-part video. So, basically... I want to talk about the zone, this this new platform and how I think for hardcore boxing fans, the ten dollar ten dollars a month is a good deal. And, you know, a lot of people are confused on what it's going to be. So even though it's a video within itself, I'm just going to give you just some basic details. We're getting 16 Matchroom USA cards. I talked to Eddie Hearn about it a couple of days ago. The videos here on the channel. We're getting 16 cards from the UK. Likely we're going to be getting I forgot to ask the gloves are off, which is like um the uk's version of hbo 24 7 with max kellerman and actually it's actually pretty good i don't expect too much drama between alexander pavekin and um you know um joshua especially since pavekin is going to be using his translator vadim this guy right here talk to him too um but still you know we're going to be getting like exclusive content so 
I, I've, I'm, I'm moving on from the Wilder talk because it's such a complicated, complex issue is that every time we talk about it, you know, people want me to take sides. I don't want to take sides. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to take sides. I just strongly feel in my in 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 my heart from looking at things that one side doesn't want the fight right now. And we're just going to leave it at that. Now, Povetkin is greatly underestimated. In fact, let me pull up his resume real quick. He's greatly underestimated because he hasn't been knocked out before and he's got that um that pedigree. Damn it. He's got that amateur pedigree. So even though he's had issues with taller fighters, damn this shit's bright. Even though he's had issues with taller fighters, he's not the type of fighter where, you know, he's not going to train to be the best he could possibly be. Now, of course, people are going to say, ah, oh, you know, he's probably going to juice. Um, Eddie Hearn himself said that he's involved with, you know, strict VADA testing and extra testing. So he's going to be really, really clean for this fight. So, of course, if he was to win against Anthony Joshua, a lot of people are going to say he was juiced out of his mind. 34 and 1, 24 KOs. He's um, 38 years old. He's listed at six foot two. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I've learned over the years, don't take box rec too seriously when it comes to certain things like height and, um, you know, fights being official and not in like their rankings in regards to they use like a point system, things like that. But in regards to his height, he's not no 6'2". You know, even you can see it, you know, this angle might mess it up for you, but even you can, you know, it's not 6'2". I'm 6'2". He's not 6'2". So fighting taller fighters, he's got to do a lot of work to get on the inside. You know, I expect, you know, him to be hook happy. And depending on who the referee is going to be, Joseph Parker was having issues, you know, trying to fight and work on the inside. But the referee, you know, and I, and I was watching the fight and I was thinking the clinches were a bit premature. You know, but remember, all referees and all judges look at everything differently. Anthony Joshua won that fight. I actually think that was a really good tension-filled boxing match. People thought it was going to be like a slugfest or somebody was going to get knocked out. Nah, I really enjoyed that fight. You know, people said it was boring. I don't think so. You know, it was a, it was a chess match. You know, Joseph Parker was trying to work his way on the inside, you know, with the jab. Anthony Joshua, you know, that uppercut, you know, and, and just so happened, it seems that Joseph Parker definitely train you know to, to to try to deflect that shit but here is um alexander povetkin's resume i've covered i've covered all these fights all the way from uh ruslan shaggy of all these years pretty much i probably missed like two maybe on youtube but anyway david price obviously as you know this was on the undercard of um his last fight um, excuse me, Joshua's last fight where he fought um, Joseph Parker. Christian Hammer, this put him in mandatory position. Rojinko, this was um, basically, these three fights basically right here were comeback fights after um, the the scandal with the failed drug test with Anthony Joshua that's, by the way, still technically ongoing. So for those who don't know, it, it's another situation that's complex, but Povetkin has not lost that case. He hasn't lost that case. You know, and there's a lot of money involved. So, moving on. If you look at these names, this is a very, very good future Hall of Fame resume. And if you you have to understand, like looking at it from an international boxing standpoint. Now, the Vladimir Klitschko fight, it was supposed to be a big fight at that time, but it was a very nasty, ugly, ugly affair. I, ah, you know, it was this, it just was, you know, nasty. And it's crazy because a guy like Anthony Joshua, if he wants to and likely and it will likely surface itself later on in his career. You know, he can use that big size and body of his to try to lay on smaller opponents and wear him out that way. You know, but right now, you know, he has the youth behind him, you know, and he keeps himself in good enough shape, especially since he's not so muscle bound no more, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, like he's moving around. But later on in the future, you know, I wouldn't be surprised when it comes to smaller fighters, because let's be let's face it. After Povetkin, after um, after um, uh, Wilder. 
and whoever's left after that is really not too many you know really really good names in the um heavyweight division that can really rival him you know uh, obviously yes i'm you know i'm missing tyson fury too so let's talk about it right let me pull this up on the other screen here let me pull this up on the other screen here let's talk about the uh top heavyweights right now and the future top heavyweights and anthony joshua talked about it a bit in the press conference yesterday because they had a mini press tour um they started in new york i was at that when it was also the announcement presser for the zone and then they had um another press conference in london yesterday and then took pictures at wembley and all that type of stuff promoting the fight so deontay wilder wbc anthony joshua has the other three belts in this manual charge situation versus fresno quindo is just ridiculous right this belt shouldn't even this belt right here shouldn't even be around but this is the belt that gerald big baby miller is targeting so if he beats um artis Spielka on october the 6th then he's going to fight the winner of manuel char versus fresno quindo no telling when this fight is supposed to happen and and at one point in time shannon briggs was in the running to fight for this belt it's, it's just it's just weird i the wba pisses me off but nonetheless here is the movers and shakers in the vision as they say you got um Pavekin who's getting this shot you got dylan white who's taking on um joseph parker we don't know what this fight's going to be for yet right now it's uh july the 19th this fight's taking place on july the um 28th and right now it's not being televised in the united states now that i think about it i don't know if espn plus is going to pick it up it's doubtful it's doubtful but um nonetheless the winner of this will likely be made mandatory, could be made uh, mandatory for either the WBO, you know, or an eliminated for the WBC. Don't be surprised if they spring that on us in the next, you know, like few days or so. And yes, Dominic Brazil is the mandatory. So he's in the mix, too, because if he beats Deontay Wilder, then, you know, he just upsets everything. You got Tyson Fury out there, but we don't know what Tyson Fury is going to be doing yet in regards to how soon he wants to pursue a heavyweight title. Because right now, if I'm correct, isn't he um, like the WBO champion in recess? So basically, whenever he wants, he can be the WBO mandatory, correct? Right. So it all depends on what he wants to fight. You got Luis Ortiz, who's rumored you know, to be fighting Deontay Wilder in a rematch on pay-per-view over here. I don't really know about that too much. If they can sell that on pay-per-view, I really don't, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, You got Kubret Pulev, who's trying to find a mandatory challenge or a, a fighter to fight for that IBF title. And it could be, you know, Huey Fury. The fight for a shot at the IBF title to be the IBF mandatory. So with the way things are looking for Anthony Joshua, he doesn't have to fight Deontay Wilder until well after a year or so. Because if he goes on to beat Alexander Povetkin, if he goes on to beat Alexander Povetkin, Deontay Wilder doesn't take the deal for, um, for April, then he can go on and fight Dylan White. But Dylan White must beat Joseph Parker. You know, and then he can spring he can spring on and say, OK, well, you know, he's going to fight Big Baby Miller because Wilder didn't want it, you know, or, you know, he can say, well, we got to fight the winner of uh, Kubret Pulev versus Siri Ferd because that's the mandatory. There's so many different ways he can go to not fight. Jo I mean, to not fight Deontay Wilder. Now, I'm not saying that he's not, you know. We also forgot to mention um, Brian Jennings, you know, who was supposed to be fighting Joseph Parker, but he could very well with him in top rank and the way, they, the, way, the way they roll over there, he could be made the mandatory for that WBO title. Two. My bad, wrong screen. I gotta get, I gotta get the used to the used to this again. Gotta get used to this again. <clears throat> so it's pretty much the situation. It's really nothing there. Ah, I gotta drink some water. Anyway, y'all gotta wait. This is the uh, cost to be the boss here. It's the cost to be the boss here. <clears throat> so right now, I look at it like this. If Alexander Povetkin was to win, then he's going to upset everything. 
it's it's really hard to talk about you know Joshua's faults because once you do, you know the English fans just like look at him as being Superman and he has a lot of casual appeal. But I don't want this video to be too long because I still got to do another one talking about the zone and um and uh, Big Baby Miller just to pretty much talk about what they're going to be doing next and hopefully not talk about all this heavyweight shit over and over again because it's kind of getting you know getting to me because every video when i talk about wilder or joshua i got to talk about all the heavyweights and how they all mix into it you know it, it, it's rough doing my job man it's not easy i'm teacher controversy this is teacher controversy live please subscribe